Hello and welcome back to my channel. If your application uses some kind of social login or just one of the main login providers like Google Identity uh, to protect the login of your application, the underlying mechanism is based on OAuth 2. There are plenty of videos on the internet that explain how OAuth 2 works. But in this video, I will only focus on the basics, what you need as a developer to make it work in your application. After the user logged in, your application will get an auth code from the identity provider. This auth code can be exchanged to a set of tokens. This set consists of a refresh token, an access token and an ID token. The ID token and the access token can be used kind of like a key to access, for example, an API or to access protected resources and functions for that user. Now access token and ID token are slightly different. The access token is more like a traditional metal key. Anyone who has it can use it. While the ID token is more like a, like an access badge. It has your name and your picture on it. So it identifies you and as a user and gives some information on who's accessing this protected resource. These two tokens can be used to access any protected functionality or data in your application. Now the refresh token is slightly different. It can be exchanged to a new set of access and ID token. So you get this set of three tokens, refresh token and ID and access token. And you keep the refresh token for long. You store it on your device, for example. Now key to using all these codes and tokens is understanding the different lifetime of them. The auth code itself has a lifetime of maybe 30 seconds up to maybe 10 minutes or so, depending on configuration. That means you use it immediately and then you throw it away. Then you have the refresh token and the lifetime of that one can be up to one year, depending on the configuration of the security requirements of your specific application. So for a banking application, online banking, it will be extremely short, or that it might not be using a refresh token at all. You have to log in every single time you use the app or something like Instagram, it will last very, very long. And you don't have to re-log in every time you open the app. So in that scenario, every time you open the app, your app will take that refresh token and get a fresh set of ID and access token. These two tokens have a duration of minutes up to one day. Again, based on configuration that you use in your setup. And they're basically used for that individual session. So there's also here not too much point on storing the ID and access token on your device. What you would really keep for the long run is there the refresh token. Now, when I talk about refreshing these tokens or exchanging the auth code with a set of tokens, let's have a look at how that works in detail. And for that, I will look at the specification from the Cognito token endpoint, as well as a sample implementation in a Flutter application. I won't say this very often, but in this case, the documentation from AWS, AWS is actually quite helpful. So here we see the documentation on the token endpoint from AWS Cognito. So you send a POST request to OAuth2 token, and it specifies how these requests look like and gives even a couple sample requests. So there are two types of requests that are really important here. And the grant type specifies which request you're doing. So authorization code is where you send the auth code that you got after login of the user. And refresh token is that you use every time the user logs in to get a fresh set of access and ID token. So let's have a look at the authorization code uh, request first. So here we have an example on the authorization code request. So you send a post request to the endpoint, the token endpoint that you specify that you configure for your uh, user pool in AWS Cognito. 
you specify content type accordingly and you set the authorization as basic and then the base64 encoded let's have a quick look at the specification here base64 encoded string of client id and client secret separated with a colon and we see in the sample spec uh, sample implementation how that exactly looks like and then we post the four parameters the grant type which specifies authorization code the client id the client that we set up in cognito for our user pool the code itself what we received from the identity provider and the redirect uri that we configured in the app client of our user pool and the response would be a json that gives us the access token an id token and a refresh token as well as the expiration date or expiration duration that we have configured in our cognito user pool now here we see the specification for refreshing the set of tokens so again it's a post to the same token same content type authorization basic it's all copy paste the same the only difference is really what we send here as grant type client id is identical uh, so grant type would be a refresh token instead of authorization code and we need to specify the refresh token so what we received earlier we can always send that back as a refresh token and what we get back is as new access token new id token with a new expiration so a fresh set of access and id token and in this function you see a um, sample implementation of how to exchange the auth code to an id token or actually it's a complete set of tokens so I prepare the headers, the content type and the authorization with this basic and then base64 encoded uh, client ID and app client secret. And the body is grant type authorization code. The code that I received here that I'm exchanging to a set of tokens. And again, the client ID and the redirect URI that's all no query parameters um, that's that's really it and i send it to the endpoint with the oauth2 token endpoint at the end so this function just sends a post request to that uh, endpoint and returns a response the response i can decode it's json and retrieve the id token the access token and the refresh token and then the refresh token i just store it on my device so i have it available when the next time the user opens up the app i can just retrieve that token from the device and get a fresh set of access and id token and extremely similar to get the id token and access token from a refresh token i send an extremely similar request to the same endpoint so again here I prepare the headers content type authorization identical to the previous request the body is different here i have grant type refresh token and add the refresh token and the client id and that's it so I send that as a post request to the same endpoint, Cognito endpoint of OAuth2 and get as a response a set of ID token and access token that I can take out of the JSON and use it to log in and create a session. So the last thing to mention from a developer point of view is keep in mind to delete the refresh token when the user logs out from your application. And that's really all your application needs to implement to manage the tokens and the auth code for the OAuth2 compliant login mechanism. If this video was helpful to you, please leave a comment below and follow for more.